Good morning. Welcome to the premium public video forecast discussion for Friday, October 20th, 2023. A few reminders before we get going with all of the data. Uh, first of all, the winter forecast is out, as you probably already know. You can go right to NY and JPA weather, and you can see the public winter forecast. And of course, premium members, you can also go to a winter forecast right on the dashboard. And also a reminder that again, November 1st, the prices increase. So if you want to lock in the current prices right now for membership, I would suggest doing so before October 31st. So November 1st, the prices increase. So it's a good Halloween present for yourself to get subscribed for the entire year or for the season, whatever works for you. Now, we have some interesting data to look at. First of all, let's take a look at the snowpack developments here over the Northern Hemisphere. And we could see some improvement here around Siberia, still a bit below normal here, especially on the eastern sides here. Uh, but we are seeing improvement. Canada still not, not really catching up so far, which is important. The reason why this is important, as we discussed in the winter forecast, is that we have to have a better understanding of the type of polar air mass, not only in terms of expansion, which looks like it's expanding pretty nicely here over Asia, but also depth and intensity. So the more snow you have in fall in Siberia and northern Canada, the better potential you have for a more intense and deeper polar and Arctic air mass. Now, these things can change you know, over the next couple of weeks. Let's say in November, we get a wind coming off the Pacific Ocean over Western Canada that leads to very mild conditions and eats the snowpack up and obliterates what's already in place. That would limit your air mass expansion and also cause more rapid modification of the polar air masses that invade. On the other side, if you get a lot of snowfall setting up for the rest of October and into early and mid-November, that could reverse that process and intensify the polar and Arctic air masses. So we're going to be keeping an eye on this and see how well it evolves. Now, if the model guidance verifies on the European guidance, the GFS, the GFS ensembles here over Canada, you can see that the snowpack will advance quite a bit and also uh, expand and intensify. You're talking about, you know, the snowfall pushing into the multiple feet level here. So that would certainly help our cause in terms of building polar air masses. And also around Siberia, we're also seeing that snow growth as well. So there is potential here between now and the end of the month to really have a rapid rebound. We'll see whether or not this verifies. That's the question as we move forward. Now, one thing that has started to verify very nicely is my idea on the EP flux and how that impacts the evolution of our stratospheric polar vortex and thus the tropospheric polar vortex. And it's a combination of understanding EP flux and also understanding what that QBO, the negative QBO is doing to the circulation of the stratosphere, of the polar vortex in the stratosphere. And as a result, eventually in the troposphere and as you can see over the next several days here well once again we see another stretching of the polar vortex and warping of the polar vortex and if we continue to see this showing up we are going to be very busy around here so this is going to be very interesting to see how well this continues to evolve when you start to see this type of signature what i call the arctic bridge when you start seeing this then you start to support a lot of funneling of polar and Arctic air masses towards North America. Now, for right now, this does not support polar and Arctic air masses invading the eastern United States, which is a good thing. What you want to see is a lot of those polar and Arctic air masses build here in Canada, and um, we'll continue to watch that evolution over the next 10 days or so. And that was, that's what helps us expand our snowpack. So certainly some very interesting data. Meanwhile, we got some interesting data back here at home. A phasing storm. 
not complete the phase. We're right at the baby stages, the infant stages right here. And this is really cool. This is the upper level winds at uh, 250 millibars. And you see this here. This is a perfect example of divergence and difluence. Look at this spreading of the of the winds here, the spreading of the heights as this is evolving. You have strong rising air here, and then you clearly have divergence and difluence setting up along the coastal plain which is setting up your development of showers. Meanwhile, your polar shortwave is starting to catch up to all of this, but the trough axis is right along the coast. And that's a really important signature here and something we're gonna to have to keep an eye on as we move through the winter months. This is something that uh, will be a theme. Where is the trough axis? When does it start tilting negative? Because of the nature of the trough axis here, when it starts going into a full tilt and it phases and the storm explodes, all that is going to happen out here, more towards like the Gulf of Maine and the coastal waters southeast of New England. And the reason why is because you need time to turn these troughs. You're talking about a lot of movement of air. So it's like steering a large boat. You need time for it to turn. So in this case, you have your ridge axis passing towards the eastern slope of the Rockies. It's clearly starting to get displaced by these troughs here in the Pacific. So it pushes everything east. And so that's why I was pretty confident for the past couple of days that, hey, pretty much we get some rainfall today and then scattered showers the rest of the weekend, not a watch out, because I saw this evolution take place. Now, if this was happening back here, then what you would have is a storm rapidly intensifying here off the Delmarva and then producing a very impressive nor'easter for the northern mid-Atlantic. But that does not appear to be a threat here. What we have here is that the bulk of the rainfall is going to be focused more towards eastern New England and uh, locations like Maine, Massachusetts, stuff like that. So when we take a look at the 850 millibar trough here, you can see that evolution take place here. This is clearly part of the subtropical jet stream. This is part of the polar jet stream. They're just starting to kind of meet and greet, shake hands, see if they want to get together. And as that is evolving, you can see that the strong lifting here, again, notice where, where I pointed out in the upper level winds, divergence and diffluence. Look where all the lifting is. This is all connected. You have convergence at the surface. It's rapidly rising and divergence allows for that expansion. And so that's essentially what we see developing here. And then here's our polar shortwave coming in interacting. So you can see this whole process start to evolve. It's just going to be a little bit too far east for us to see the bulk of this rainfall. That's all. It's going to be setting up more out here as a result. And you can see that very nicely here on the water vapor satellite picture and you can see all that very nicely here the lifting starting to expand and grow on the infrared satellite picture now again because of the nature of this dynamics the bulk of this strong lifting i.e the colder cloud tops are all remaining over the coastal waters but the coastal plain is going to get clipped here with a uh, periods of showers capable of some heavy downpours we've already seen that this morning and you can see in our observations here as we get just new data right this minute, uh, we have some areas of heavier showers here uh, over the interior, mostly dry, passing shower here and there, but for the most part, it's been put mostly dry. Temperatures ranging from the mid to upper 50s over the northern interior for the most part, upper 50s to lower 60s along the coast, but winds coming in from the south and the southeast around 5 to 10 miles per hour. As we go on through the day, we'll continue to see these waves of showers just kind of march their way northward. This is the weather tap, radar, and surface map. You can see there is our polar representation. There is our subtropical representation, the subtropical jet stream. Here's our lifting that we're starting to see in the front genesis taking shape, supporting these showers. Again, capable of some heavy downpours from time to time, but most of that is going to be focused right along the coast and then off into eastern New England, as that is where our best lifting this area of showers will start to pivot and start to fall under the influence of this low pressure system and swing through tomorrow morning. And basically this cold front is going to start to break up and all the polar air comes in behind this low pressure system as it's lifting northward. See it pretty nicely here on the model, guys. Again, this is at 500 millibars. Notice over the next couple of hours into tomorrow morning, the trough axis it's focused off the coast. There's all your lifting to the east of the region, focused more towards eastern New England. And there, as a result, is going to be your heavier precipitation rates. 
you can see that at 700 millibars and 850 millibars meanwhile we are also going to have cold air starting to rush in and that's important because it starts to destabilize the atmosphere and that's going to set up mixing taking shape for saturday into sunday and when you have that mixing well you have some strong winds here at the mid levels at 850 millibars and that supports your threat for some strong wind gusts especially on sunday afternoon so we kind of have everything kind of playing together here right so we have all the pieces so let's walk through the next 90 hours so for today our showers start to expand and grow the heaviest showers will be along the coast not a complete washout the whole day but if you get into one of these showers it's going to be a pretty heavy downpour so just be prepared to have an umbrella with you those showers will continue to expand through this evening and on through the overnight periods again not a washout for everyone but have your umbrella handy tomorrow morning those showers continue to lift through again not a washout but keep your umbrella handy and then for saturday afternoon to sunday morning just pesky showers here and there most of the region will remain dry so again not a washout this weekend but then keep your umbrella handy by the time we get to sunday afternoon you probably don't want to have your umbrella handy because you might be flying down the road because we're going to set up a nice little pressure gradient and we're going to set up some of that mixing down with those winds and that's going to set up the event where we're going to have wind sustained at 10 to 20 miles per hour with gusts over 30 miles per hour at times so definitely want to be prepared for that and then monday it looks to be pretty tranquil so let's dive into this forecast for today for today we're going to continue to deal with scad showers throughout the region again capable of heavy downpours look for high temperatures in the lower to mid 60s over the interior mid to upper 60s along the coast and upper 60s to lower 70s in the delaware river valley for tonight into tomorrow morning periods of showers heavy at times look for low temperatures to fall into the upper 40s to lower 50s over the northern interior mid to upper 50s along the coast for tomorrow scattered showers not a washout so you don't have to cancel your plans completely but keep an umbrella handy look for high temperatures to range from the upper 50s to lower 60s over the northern interior lower to mid 60s along the coast on sunday a few showers in the morning followed by clearing skies in the afternoon breezy with winds from the northwest around 10 to 20 miles per hour with gusts at times pushing over 30 miles per hour look for low temperatures in the lower to mid 40s over the northern interior upper 40s to lower 50s along the coast high temperatures in the mid to upper 40s over the northern interior lower to mid 50s in your suburbs and upper 50s to lower 60s on the immediate coast on monday high pressure will be in control with sky cloud cover we'll look for low temperatures in the upper 30s to lower 40s over the northern interior mid to upper 40s along the coast high temperatures in the lower to mid 50s over the northern interior upper 50s to lower 60s along the coast the same setup for tuesday and for wednesday with high pressure pushing off the coast look for low temperatures by the time we get to wednesday to be a bit warmer so monday and tuesday basically mimic each other wednesday a little bit warmer with low temperatures ranging from the lower to mid 50s throughout the region for lows and high temperatures ranging from the upper 50s i'm sorry upper 60s to lower 70s along the immediate coast and lower to mid 70s away from the coast now on thursday a cold front will move through with a few isolated showers in the morning followed by sky cloud cover in the afternoon look for low temperatures in the lower to mid 50s over the northern interior upper 50s to lower 60s along the coast high temperatures in the upper 50s to lower 60s over the northern interior mid to upper 60s along the coast in your suburbs upper 60s to lower 70s in your urban areas and on friday High pressure will be in complete control with sky cloud cover, a bit chillier. Look for low temperatures in the upper 30s to lower 40s over the northern interior, lower to mid 40s along the coast. High temperatures ranging from the upper 50s to lower 60s over the northern interior, lower to mid 60s along the coast. That is your forecast discussion for today. Have a wonderful weekend, and as always, stay safe out there.